welcome. Here we have an HP computer. Uh, BIOS does not see the hard drive, so we're going to have to change out the hard drive on this machine. Shutting it down. Uh, it's an HP ProBook 4525S. And as you can see, no access panels on the bottom to get to the hard drive. Uh, so how do you open this thing up? It's a good question. Let's go ahead and explore that. First, let's remove the battery. And you'll find three screws that will release the top plate on the front. So let's first remove those three screws. And before we can go any further, there's two more screws we need to remove as well. They may have little rubber panels over them, so remove the rubber panels first, and then remove the screws on the back of the computer here. And again, this is just standard Phillips screws. All of these. Okay. Now that we have those screws removed, we can open up the computer, and this top panel will slide up and off. Very easy. All right, now we need to remove the keyboard. Two screws to do that, here and here. So just remove those two screws. and the keyboard will slide straight up and out. And now we need to remove the bottom panel. There are three screws for that. One, two, and three. So we'll just take those out. And this bottom panel will slide to the right to come off, and then flip up. We could remove it completely by undoing that, but this gives me access to the hard drive, and that's what I'm looking to replace today. Three screws for the hard drive. One, two, and three. and we can just pull that right out. Hard drive is now removed. There are four screws on the sides of the hard drive to get it out of its casing. And old hard drive, it's bad. Let's toss that. Let's stick in a new hard drive. So let's just put this all back together now. Oops. Oh, I keep dropping screws. Okay. Too much coffee this morning, I think. All right. Fortunately, I have a couple of extra hard drive screws right over here. All right, now we are ready to install our new hard drive back into the system. It should slide right in there. sure it's fully connected and then just start screwing everything back in.
new hard drive is now installed. I put this back on, slide it to the left now to get it into place, and put the three screws in that will connect that. While I'm in here, I'm also going to take a look at the RAM. This computer has two RAM slots and only one 2 gig card in there. But since I'm not even sure what type of RAM this is, let's see if I have something compatible to stick in there. Nope. Wait, this one looks right. Another two gigabyte card. So we just upgraded the RAM from two gigs to four gigs in this customer's computer. All right, get the keyboard back in place, just slide it back down. It can be tricky to get it to click into place where it should. And there we go. Put the longer screws that were in these spots back in. And then slide your top bar back in place. And then it should slide right back in place. A little bit of trouble here. Um, and there we go. Now we'll put the screws underneath the battery back in place. And that plate is not in, right, in the right spot. The screws don't go in, that means you have a problem with this plate. It's not fitting in quite right. There. That should go over the keyboard. All right, we didn't get the keyboard back in, right? And that's why the top plate's not working. So let's pull the keyboard back out just a moment. Some are so fast, I don't even have to stop my car at the window. But I run them, I do. What gives? Something didn't go all the way down. That feels better. Okay. I had a bulge, I didn't, there's one little catch that was on the keyboard that didn't catch, and I now did. We don't stick it in a microwave, and we leave the heat lamps to tanning salons and residents in New Jersey. So it might take a couple extra seconds, but trust us, real food is worth the wait. Okay, now this should work much better. That is now in place. And we're putting the screws back in underneath the battery panel. And then these little back screws here. And let's see how BIOS takes to our new configuration that we've just added. We should get an error that the amount of memory has changed.